he gets hard up him, you know. Have have something you besides just, you music. Gotta, you gotta yeah. learn to love and and to and to lick the boot that that kicks you day after day, you know. Wow. You, know, you, know, you, know, you gotta just. Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local Las Vegas music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and today I'm happy to welcome from Mother Mackenzie, Wyatt Tomas Mackenzie. Hello. Say hi to the people. And is it Tomas or Thomas? It's, uh, well, yeah, of course it's Tomas. No, but, no it's, it's Thomas. Okay. Yeah. We had this conversation before. Uh, Wyatt was actually on a, a, a podcast I did with Tiffany Salerno. You should hit her up if you want any awesome photos of your band or whatever. Um, and link is down in the doobly-doo. And uh, he was our first guest, a podcast called Under the Neon. And uh, I think I asked you that before, and you're like, ah, it's whatever. Right, right. Well, I, uh, it was the, the most, I think, that they would let me mess around with uh, the spelling of my own name. Uh, oh, when you were born, it was with an H? No, no, just on Facebook, you know? Oh, oh, gotcha. I wanted, gotcha. To, cha I wanted to change it to Wyvern McConaughey. Yeah, but they, believe uh, me, I, I had plans for, you know, more than just Room 6 on Facebook, but eh, it is what it is. Right, right, right. So. The, uh, yeah, no, it's, uh, they only let, so now, actually, I, I believe it has it listed, pronounced as Wyvern McConaughey, but it's just <laughs> Yeah, you can, you can offer that, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, uh, they're getting persnickety, um, kind of like YouTube. <laughs> right, right, they're getting, uh. Speaking of which, if you like watching these videos, <laughs> please. Please consider subscribing. It's not that I need the ego boost. It's that in order for me to do certain things I want to do to help the scene, I would really like this channel to be monetized. And to do that, I need a thousand subscribers and four thousand hours of watch time within a twelve-month period. Plus, you need the ego boost. No, not really. I'm a singer, man. <laughs> right, right. Um, but the last thing uh, we would need is yeah. another ego boost. But actually. What would really help if you want to support the content you love, want to support the musicians I have on the show, I plan on putting on a showcase eventually where, hey, I pay the musicians. How about that? A little music festival for you, the fans. And uh, to do that, there's a link down in the description for my Patreon page. I've got some great tiers there with some great perks. All you got to do is donate whatever you feel like donating, even if it's a buck a month. It will help. It will add up. And I'll be able to make better videos and also take care of the people that are making the channel what it is, including you. So thanks for watching. And thanks for being on. All right. Well, thanks for having me. Welcome to my show. Bing. Mm. Double chin. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, how long have you been in Vegas? I moved to Las Vegas in 1999, I believe. So. Can I ask from where? Um, yeah, I, I grew up in... Uh, in the, the south, in the south of the south, I was born in Orlando, Florida. <laughs> I, it's uh, hard to get much souther than south, south. Yeah. yeah well, as you know, they, it's like down there, they don't really consider Florida, you know, part of the uh, uh, the envelope that is yes. the uh, Confederate uh, yeah. my, uh, states of the of the southern. My daughter would, would would love to live somewhere near Orlando for you know Disneyland, Universal Studios, and all that. Oh yeah, yeah. Like, was... I'm like, no, you really. Delightful being a yeah. kid, you know. Uh, yeah, but but then I said, well, you know what else they have in, in Florida? She's like, yeah, tornadoes and hurricanes and Florida man. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Lots of weird local lore. Yes. Lots what of, uh, what giant? What hap What is it about Florida man? What is what is what is Florida man? Really? Is it, I, okay. Um, you know all the headlines. Like Florida man challenges. Crocodile to a fight, or you know, um, there's all these weird headlines involving Florida man or Florida woman. Okay. And oh like, no. What yeah. is okay. it about that? Air, that it's state? a weird. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's fucking weird. Yeah. Florida is like the weirdest. You know, you can buy those uh, those books that are like uh, weird Nevada. You mm -hmm. know, like the weird Florida is amazing. Yeah. I was you like, know? we have nothing on Florida. <laughs> there's yeah. There's I will no actually the weird Nevada is amazing actually. There, uh, I'll t we'll talk about that later. Okay. But um. There's just so much bizarre stuff in, in in Florida. Like, I mean, one of the coolest things is the climate. You know, is mm -hmm. there were alligators? You know, in the neighborhood I grew up in, in this little lake. You know, like walk like, you know, 
less than a mile away and I could go look at alligators, you know. Right. And, um, I mean, that is kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just don't, you know, play with them. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, we were, we were like, stupid, reckless kids, you know. Yeah, like, yeah. Probably, kids in my neighborhood probably, sh you know, try to shoot fireworks at them. Yeah. But, and then, they're, you know, they're beautiful, like, you know, you go to a friend's house and there'd be these beautiful, like, geckos uh, kind of, you know, perched on the on their door, you know, way, or, you know, tree frogs. There's, it's just... Right. Teeming with wildlife and um, and uh, just it's kind of like a below southern kind of a weird white trash mentality also pervades the entire yeah. area. But if you're watching in Florida, hey, thanks for watching and you know, good luck. I'm one of you. <laughs> um, how long? Um, we're going. I hate to do this, but. We did the podcast, asked a lot of these questions, or, or you know, we're going to go over a little bit of well-trodden ground, strictly because a whole new, you know, theoretically, a whole new audience. A whole new canvas. A whole new world. Yes. <laughs> now, how long have you been um, Mother McKenzie? I know that you, you're you pretty much, you, you took a hiatus for a while, just recently got back, did the CD release show, mm -hmm. or the EP release show. Um, how long has Mother McKenzie been a thing, though? Uh, I think I was 19 when I started Mother McKenzie, probably in 2006. Right before that, it, I can't remember the name of the band right now. Um, before that, yeah, I was in a band called the Invisible Orchestra. That's the one. That I started in high school, yeah. uh, LBA. Um, and, um, yeah, just uh, I put out a bunch of albums in high school. I went to LBA, studied guitar, took piano on the side, and uh, music theory classes, and uh I uh, was the kid who, like, the, my teacher said that I was one of the most talented students there, but, you know, I would I would ditch class, and I was kind of a drunk, you know, already by the age of 16, and uh, I, so, uh, you know, I, I was pretty rebellious, and I didn't, f really, probably because I didn't feel like the, uh, the classes were challenging enough, you know, mm -hmm. so, uh, and, and they weren't, they, they didn't really offer anything as far as creativity, you know, is gotcha. concerned. So I uh got bored, you know, and um and reckless, you know. And the obsessed with girls, you know. Yeah. Which is the, the three uh y yeah you're, three you're, notes of destruction. You might as well write a country song life. now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Alright, um now how long have you been doing music just overall? Uh I started playing guitar uh, took my first guitar lesson in Irmo, South Carolina when I was speaking of the South, seven years old, mm -hmm. and uh, I was, was kind of kind of before that. Never really felt like I was good at anything. Um, so like once I found that I was good at music, I just you know learned drums, keyboard. Right after that, the violin lessons. Uh, you know, learned how to play like. 20 plus instruments, you know, and I, I my parents got me a uh, multi-track recorder when I was in high school, and I would uh, just, you know, I had the, the I had the whole uh, setup, you know, and uh, spend every little, you know, Christmases and and birthdays, all of that on new instruments, you know, and and just was always making music. I, I put out like probably like over 10 you know, full-length albums when I was in high school. Just lo-fi, you know, material screwing around. Sure. But, but uh, content. I mean, it's a, it's a huge... I have a huge file at home. Actually, my mom uh, gave it to me uh, before she moved. Of a uh, huge amount of content that I did in high school. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't release the majority of it to the public. <laughs> but I, yeah. I've made a few uh, compilations um, um, here and there of, yeah. when, of when some cleaned-up stuff. When I think back to the first few songs I ever wrote, it's 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 bad when you're embarrassed to yourself. Like you know, no one else is gonna hear this. I'm still embarrassed. But yeah, uh, <laughs> but that's eh, that's a good segue actually talking about um, you know high school and, and that to um, early musical influences. What right, right. what was the first you know music that really kind of got you thinking? Hey, I can do that, or I want to do that, or yeah, you know. Um... So when I when I first started playing guitar, I didn't really 
uh, I didn't really fully know what music was yet, I don't think. And I, I you know, I kind of tried to listen to bands that I thought would be conducive to learning gu sure. guitar techniques. So, you know, I, you know, naturally I turned to Metallica when I was like 10, you know, 9, 8. Um, and, and I would, you know, but like Metallica, you know, I was like, it wasn't the kind of thing where I wanted to put on their music and like, you know, and, and study, you know, every, every, right. It wasn't you, until you I trying found to be the, it wasn't until I found the cure, you know, the cures, uh, kiss me, kiss me, kiss me. Mm -hmm. Um, my brother had like a, a, a girlfriend, I think that introduced him to that. And I was like, wow, this is interesting. And, uh, the lyrics really grabbed me, you know, uh, and, and, Sucked me in, and and I would just spend hours listening to the Cure, and then I got into bands like the Smiths and the Pixies, like really, really young. So far, a lot of open chords, yeah, right? <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah. That's good. Which, when you're learning guitar, hey. But um, bands like the the Cure and the Smiths, uh, there is they're underrated a lot as songwriters. Oh yeah, oh. you know because people get tied up in the the look or in whatever it is their package. You know they're trying to. Whatever it is that helped them to get famous besides the song, basically, you know, people tend to get lost in that. Um, all right, so from early musical influences, current musical influences, what do you listen to now that really gets you going, gets you jazzed? Um, well, uh, well, something that I've been really, really into lately, actually, is mm -hmm. I've been um, trying to go back in, into the kind of Americana roots of music, and uh, there's an amazing uh, full compilation, uh, actually... Uh, lately, uh, I'm, I'm an occultist, uh, uh, you know, I study, uh, and, and research and perform, uh, ceremonial magic, uh, yeah. we can explain what that is, yeah. it's, it's a complicated subject, but, uh, it's one of my, my passions in life. Um, yep, we've and, had, uh, we've had, uh, Brendan from Midnight Disease on here. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, he's a fellow, fellow yep. magic practitioner, so, uh, Basically, um, where was it going with that? Was I just toting that? <laughs> Current musical influences. Oh, okay. So, um, m magic and music have very much uh, coincide for me lately. But, uh, there, okay, so, very, very important um, musical curator uh, by the name of... You lost your head. Did I? <laughs> that can't be good. By the name of uh, Harry Smith... Very simple name. He was a uh, he was a magic practitioner, mm -hmm. and he uh, made a very important uh, compilation of music called the American Folk Anthology. And uh, this, name, I recognize that. I don't recognize Harry Smith. Yeah, it, it came out right around the time for it to influence the Greenwich Village folk music scene, which you know Bob Dylan and such right. ended up taking over the world and became pop music. But basically, Harry Smith was a magic practitioner, and he actually believed himself to be the uh, the son of Aleister Crowley. Um, mm, that's a dubious honor. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of the uh, a lot of the material on the American folk anthology is tied together by this kind of running theme of uh, like the devil and the the crossroads ritual. So it's. Um, it's interesting, like when people talk about how, like, oh, you know, rock music, pop music is the devil. No, no, no. You really, no. kind of, it's true. Really, <laughs> you well, can trace it back I mean, to this. You know, yeah. There, there is a common uh, the, the energy of blues music. Uh, it, it's it's invocative. You know, it, it, it's it's simple three bar chords. You know, there's there's right. so many you know white people that can just never get it right because it's invocative. There's an energy, a dark energy that you have to invoke when you're performing the blues and right. it, it's 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 a very much a, a magical practice uh a lot of people get it wrong because it's all it's solely just playing if, if you can attach a strong dark energy like a current of, of power to just those three simple chords it mm -hmm. becomes something else it be, it's, it's like alchemy right so um i like to think it's called the blues for a reason it's not called the happies right right <laughs> right, right, right yeah you, you need to go to a certain place if you want to do it justice and uh Fortunately, unfortunately, um, I, I have good life, so you know, <laughs> right, right, right. It's, it's tough. Um, can't always, can't yeah. always play the blues. Well, that leads to an interesting question. Mm -hmm. This is the the most hated question of all interview questions. Right. How do you define your musical style? 
Um, it changes. It, yeah. it changes a lot. You know, I was I was thinking earlier about like, um, you know, like this is sometimes people will ask you a question on, on on something. You know, like quoting you something you said you know years ago or at a different time. You think, oh man, I'm, I was in such a different headset at that time. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, that, that's a good thing because we're constantly evolving. We always should be evolving. We always should be jumping from plane to plane. We should never be definitely standing still. And uh, so my music, it, it, it has changed around a lot. For a long time, it kind of uh, was defined by this kind of melancholy, nostalgic kind of uh, narrative, linear, you know, lyrical ballad type structure uh you know where it's usually about experiences often kind of negative experiences uh with with uh women or you know with with women and and getting intoxicated on various substances or you know it's it's, it's basically looking at you know a, a piece from a person's past um you know tied to tied to these various things you know uh and um, I think that there was almost an obsession with like the 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 influence of of female characters in the music, and I think over time I learned that that was kind of my soul's yearning for you know for for God for for sort of the female aspect of God, mm-hmm. and um, I I sought you know different routes and and practices to become more in touch with that, so I wasn't yearning for it all the time and now my music isn't about nothing but that you know now right. now i sing about you know other stuff all kinds of things uh a lot of people probably say that they just miss me singing about the girls you know mm. <laughs> you, you, you can't yeah you got to do it for you right you know? exactly so, all right um yeah. it, aside from you know you you read you just Recently, not well. I say recently, like maybe a month ago or two months ago, you did your release show. Mm-hmm. Well, any musical goals right now for Mother Mackenzie or for you? Yeah, well, I I put out two albums uh, yeah. this summer. I and uh, I think it was uh, the beginning of summer. I put out Welcome to Fabulous Las Vegas, which is actually an album that I recorded years ago, and I kind of went through a bit of turmoil with. So I uh, got it got kind of tied up into obscurity with this contract, and I felt really bad because I thought it was this kind of like really rich piece of music, you know, that I could never put out, and I was so passionate about it, it made me really depressed actually for many years. Um, it is tough when you you're passionate about something, and other people are making it difficult. Yeah, you know, it made me miserable actually. It's, it really really held me back for a long period of time, and uh, the people from this label would not even respond a word to me because, you know, various judgments they had, or this or that. And I literally was just trying to say, well, what the fuck are we going to do about this piece of music? Right. And, I, you know, I just tried everything, you know, I, uh, threatening them, you know, if, you know, tried the loving way, the kind way, the mean way, you know, right. the, uh, and they just tried to sue them, got a lawyer, was going to sue them. And then, uh, you know, look in my heart. Do I really want to sue somebody? Can I sue somebody? No. You know, that's that. I, I'm a, I'm an anarchist by nature. <laughs> you know, I, I I don't I don't like I, I can you know I I don't believe in right. But no, no. Um, I just re-recorded it. You know, as soon as I had the means to. Right. Uh, I did it on my cell phone, it, and it, I for for the production quality, I think it's it's sensationally good. You know. Right. And um. And what's that called? Welcome to Fabulous Las Vegas. Right. So, link will be down yeah. there. Check it out. It's a conceptual album about uh, adolescence and growing up, uh, you know, in Las Vegas. It's a weird place to yeah. come of age. Sin City. Right, right, right. Uh, which actually is, it leads to a, a, another nice segue. Um, favorite show memory? Oh. It, it could be, you know, Wild One or, or you know. There's, a, there's so many. I mean, um Spilling popcorn all over your table. Yeah, man. What the heck? Don't get popcorn in your Southern Comfort. Um, in your SoCo. It's just extra flavor. Man, that's a tough one, really. That is a tough one. Um, 
I'm going to take a little booze break. Go ahead and tell the audience. <laughs> I was all fine one. When I was, um, I think 18 years old. Sponsor me. I'd actually just, uh, did you really? You got a sponsor from... No, no, I said sponsor me, please. Oh, yeah, seriously, please. Please do. No, I, I, I uh, right after I'd actually dropped out of high school, I uh, did a, a performance at the uh, the Arts Factory. And uh-huh. I was with this kind of punk band I was in. And um, I wore this, like, you know, this kind of, like, this this dress that... Kind of like, like what you wore to the podcast? No, no, no! It was much, it was much uh, skimpier dress than that. <laughs> I, um, no underwear. I accidentally exposed myself to like you oh. know, everyone, all these, and these teachers I had. Right. You know, that's how you, that's how they got Jim Morrison. You know, I said, I said, <laughs> you know, I went out with a bang. I left LVA with a bang. Nice. Um, yeah, I was just kind of like rolling around on the floor and like. You know. Well, here's to uh, showing all your worth. There you go. Mm. Anyway, that's pretty. It good. was that's completely good. intentional, also. It oh, okay. That's pretty good show memory. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm from my favorite show memory, uh, favorite venue. It probably wasn't the only time. Oh, <coughs> I'm sorry, favorite venue. Yeah. Um, is it the Arts Factory, <laughs> which no. it, which is a pretty cool place to play. I've, yeah, I've, no, I've yeah, I like, I like playing in Josh's uh, Joshua Cohen's, uh, his. Uh, Studio in there. I've only Working played there. in the the back parking lot area when they had a stage set up. I've, right. I've only done that. But I did cool. one of my worst shows ever. Actually, at the uh, Arts Factory. <laughs> we won't talk about that. All right. But, so um, my favorite venue. I uh, Catherine Giannakis Park for the Arts. Have you ever heard? No. Where's that? It was a. Uh, they don't do shows there anymore. Uh, it was in Trop and Boulder. It was um, an art commune. Really? Yeah. Uh, hmm. For shows were, to go, yeah. They were active in the uh, late '90s and a bit in the early 2000s, and uh, I kind of performed there a lot during a resurgence they had around two, you know 2008, 2009. Hmm. They, people were always living there, you know, <laughs> uh, and making Probably. art, but it wasn't always uh, <coughs> show friendly, you know, because you know cops get called and things like this, you know. Yeah. But that's, I, I never heard of that. It was amazing. I've been here 17, 17 how long have we been here? 17, 18 years. And I never heard of it. Cool. Amazing. Uh, they had like uh, about like, I think four acres of just kind of desert lot in the back. And, uh, you know, they had just, it was this beautiful space, just found art everywhere, you know, installations. Everybody who lived there basically nice. was, they, they all made art installations, traveled the country doing that. And uh, it sounds so, kind of like the Arts Factory. Only with people, you know, not people living basically, there. Basically, yeah, basically, like, if the Arts Factory was a big, you know, communal space, uh, right. you know, a lot of, lots of people who have been uh, instrumental in, in the Arts Factory and, 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 you know, various workings that have gone on there have been involved with Catherine G. Aquilas. Uh, mm-hmm. Everyone who's deep in the, in the arts community, uh, as far as visual arts, uh, prob- probably knows mm-hmm. about it. Right on. Um, but it, it was... Uh, only, only very, very underground, like uh, Vegas musicians. Uh, huh. But Jarboe of the Swans performed there uh, in the oh, you know, late nineties, right? yeah. uh, and uh, they, yeah, they had some more prominent acts uh, come through. But they, they, they used, to, yeah, just it was in, it was incredible. I mean, it was like you know they they had multiple places. You know, we, we used to do campfire shows there. You know, and we'd have like. Uh, 30, 40 friends come out and we'd sit around in a big campfire circle and I would perform, you know, acoustic songs that the other people would play and we, you know, we'd all sing along and I have a million, like, really, really warm memories of just, like, me and my friends, like, uh, it sounds know, really getting cool. drunk and singing along yeah. to my, you know, my songs, you know. Well, that leads to, um, the next question. Any dream show you want to play or, you know. Some tour you want to be part of, or yeah, I'm I'm trying to get it set up right now. Um, I really want to play. Uh, and this shout out to my buddy Thomas Carlson in Sweden uh, of Dragon Rouge. My my friend Thomas Carlson is a very very um, accomplished uh, author and um, 
and doctor of uh, comparative religion, and he's in a he's in a great metal band called uh, Shadow Seeds, hmm. and he also writes the lyrics for another metal band, Therian. Uh, and I'm very, very privileged to call him my friend. But um, he lives in uh, Sweden, and he runs a magical order called Dragon Rouge. And um, I uh, relate to these people more than uh, than than my, uh, re- you know many people. And I, I would ideally, I would like to go to Sweden and uh, perform for them. Right on. I wouldn't mind going to Sweden because my. Uh... The in-laws are, you know, they're Swedish. They're, yeah. my, wife, my wife is half Swedish. All right. Yep. So, so let's, I, let's all turn this into one big deal. All right. All right. Um, moving on. We're going. All yeah. right. Right on. Let's go visit the... Uh... But... I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so. Let's talk gear. Okay. What are you currently rocking? Mm, nothing too fancy. My favorite, my most, my most prized piece of musical equipment is my um, my guitar red. Uh, it's it's my uh, red uh, SG. You name your guitar too? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I name my guitars. R E D. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's got it a pawn shop for like they were like trying to get rid of their guitar so it was, like fast and they, I got it for seventy dollars for some reason. <laughs> Incredible, yeah. incredible. Um, what are you, what are you doing on uh, pedals? Um, because I've heard your music and I, there's pedals galore. <laughs> well, I um, yeah, like um, I had a loop pedal that I was fooling around with for a while, and um, I traded it or something, uh, and then um, right now I fool around with like a few, uh, you know, just kind of. Uh, very, you know, various delay pedals and things like that. Um, but um, it's uh, with my music, it's it's way more uh, concentrated on probably post production effects than you know pedal boarding or anything right. like that. Use a lot of um, patches and stuff in the program. Yeah, I don't know. But when you play live, when I play live, I usually just play through an acoustic guitar. Oh, um, really? okay. Because I like. My instruments um, on my albums. Uh, There's no way to like duplicate it live. Well, oftentimes no, because I, you, right. like if you, my my newest album, I, like I put out again uh, two albums this summer. I, I put out Welcome to Fabulous Las Vegas and then uh, Red Dragon, which is um, a totally different album. Um, but um, Red Dragon, if you listen to it, it's it's full of production. I mean, if if I was going to orchestrate that live. I would need probably 30 musicians, you know, some playing instruments, some just having, you know, garage band on their iPhones playing yeah. synthetic, you know, uh, stringed instruments and things like that. I mean, it's a, it's a heavily orchestrated album. I mean, it's it, obsessively yeah, orchestrated. I know the feeling because uh, my second album, um, Postcards from the Sun, I had a, a song on there where I just kept doing take after take on the guitar solo. Just take after take after take seven tracks, Use them all, right? and I and I was like, "Let me hear what it sounds like all together." And a little tweaking later, we used all seven. And so there's no way I could like by myself or even with a four piece band. But right. there's no way we can duplicate it. Right. But it, when you listen to it, you're like, "Yeah, yeah, that it 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 goes." But I don't know how I would do. Like I can't. Right. Remember, I can't remember some what I did on some of them. You know, Billy Corgan of uh, Smashing Pumpkins, the album Sunny's Dream. We there's, there's some tracks on that album where he overdubbed over a hundred guitar tracks per song. That sounds like Billy Corgan. Isn't that crazy? Uh, um, and then you see him like play the songs live, and it's like, eh, no. But I mean, it's like if you can still play it live. I mean, yeah. This just seems obsessive. Like an obsessive... Uh, oh, I think ob- obsessive, definitely. Uh, uh, obsessive, excessive. Or excessive, obsessive. Um, He's a dick, anyway. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Joey, do you know uh, Joey Hines? I don't know. He's been on the channel twice, actually. He's the only uh, person I've interviewed twice, because he wanted to. Okay. Uh, shout out Joey. He has a song that goes, I love you, but I don't love Seether. What's up? I love you, but I don't love Seether. The band Cedar. Oh, okay. And during it, he says, you know, 
I don't like Billy Corgan either. <laughs> nice. I mean, the nice. early stuff was kind of good. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I think the best album yeah. was uh, was Gish for sure. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> excuse me, yeah, yeah, kind of got worse and worse from them. Yep. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm coughing because you're eating popcorn. How's that? No, I'm just kidding. Um, you're so, allergic to my uh, yes. <coughs> No. I'm uh, doing this. So current from current gear, we'll move to dream gear. Is there something you're lusting after, yet your Wayne's World moment of a someday you'll be mine? I, no. no? I try not to. And no pedals or anything you really, really want? I try not to. Well, oh, things that I want right now. Yeah. Oh, well, well, like that? Yeah, I'm saying it. Yeah. Money's I no mean, object. What's your dream gear? What's the thing you meant? Yeah, that'd be great someday. I mean, um, that'd be wise, and I'd get a bunch of little things that, I, you know, could go a long way, probably. Yeah. I know what I would, what I would want is a completely decked out studio. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I would, I would, I would, <laughs> if I, if there was unlimited funds, I would just piece together the cheapest, you know, most affordable. Yeah. But, you know, I've got that, actually, because I think, you know, garage band. No, no, not cheap. That's, that's the point of dream oh, gears. Yeah. No, nope. no, I'm always going to be cheap. I mean. Yeah, I know. Give me a bunch of money and I'll just continue to be cheap. You all can't see my setup here <laughs> on the cheap. Oh, what are you talking about? There's, there's, there's... Yeah, I've got three people working for me. They just stand next to the camera. Don't move them at all. Hey, 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 what are you doing? Just kidding. Um, so from Dream Gear, from the highs of Dream Gear to the lows of losing gear. You ever lose gear? Yes. Yes? Very, very often. Yes. If anybody's watched any of my interviews, I'm not going to bore you, but with that same old story of how I lost, I, I basically set it down next to the van and drove off. Oh, Forgot yeah. to load it in, and I got home. I was like, I really just did that, didn't Dude, I? Dude, like... And it was gone. It was gone. I, you get intoxicated at shows, yeah. and, you, and you weave, you know, uh, microphone stands and microphones and... Clothing. <laughs> Girlfriend. But is, is is what's the uh, the one that sticks? Yeah, what's the one that sticks out to you though that that you're losing your? I don't even want to go there, man. Right it's, on. Uh, well, I, I, it's surprisingly a lot of people when I ask that question. Is, cables? Like, how do you lose a cable? No, it's I, connected. No, I, you unplug. You pull as many cables. Yeah, I mean it's connected, but you got to unplug it. You know. I know. Right. What I lose more than anything is picks. No. Because I, I, for whatever reason, I keep getting picks in my hand that are dark colored, and it'll drop on the ground. I don't think I've ever. Kept successfully kept a pick is the thing. I think I always yeah. have them every single time. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, last question. You made it. Oh, good. Are right. we at the end already? Yeah. Right. I, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I asked the questions you answered. Um, it tends to go longer when there's you know a group because there's always one chatty Kathy who's no, uh, monopolized. But um, so let's pretend we're talking to new musicians. Okay. Or somebody who, who doesn't know how to, you know, get what get going, what you got going. Don't do it. Yeah. Don't do it. It's the labor. Aside, of, it's the labor of is love. There, is there any sort of um, your maintenance tip or, or or any sort of advice you give besides the usual like change your strings? You, you just know. you know, it gets hard out there. You know, have have something you besides just, you music. Gotta, you gotta yeah. learn to love and and to and to lick the boot that that. Kicks you day after day, you know. Wow! And, uh, you know, you gotta just you love to kiss to kiss that sweet boot as it knocks <laughs> your fucking daylights out. You know, day after day, week after week, year after year. That's that's deep, man. Until you're an old man, just full of you know fucking the cracks, crack skull, you know, crack, crack teeth. You just you know, Jeez. it's a labor of love, and you're loving a fucking hey, buddy, steel toed boot. You, you doing all right, buddy? <laughs> I didn't mean to take you down that hole. <laughs> I'm just fine. Uh, I'm just yeah. fine. But yeah, it, it, it's it's uh, don't don't it's, uh, just rely on music to make you happy. Basically, <laughs> you you make music because you love to make music. Mm -hmm. so, uh, actually, I believe it was Aleister Crowley who had the beautiful uh, quote: "Pure will, unassuaged of purpose, delivered from the lust of result, is in every way perfect." If you're doing it for the pure will of loving music mm -hmm. and having that thing in you that just can't live without it, like I've got, I'm sure you've got, mm -hmm. you know, y you can't function without it. So you do it because you love it. And, you know, uh, there's this weird thing that we all have in our heads that we have to have some kind of a, 
reward or punishment for everything we do. You know, I, I think that, you know, growth and music, you have to take these things into mind. Well, you know, it's, it, society is changing. Music is changing. It doesn't look like it looked in the 90s or even the early 2000s anymore. Mm -hmm. I mean, now... Uh, as pop becomes increasingly a joke as time goes on, you know, as mumble rap is a thing, you know, and it's becoming increasingly ridiculous. Right. So you don't even want to make, you know, popular music, you know, if 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 you're a true artist, if you're a true a true individual. I, you're, I heard something that has, has resonated with me and stuck with me for a long time. You can be an artist or you can be a product. Right, right. Um, and the real, the ones that are really fortunate get to be an artist with a product right. that people want, and that they still retain their art artists, their artistic sensibilities and their and their artistic freedom. And it's hard. It, yeah, you know. Uh, granted, with a lot, a lot has changed in the last five, ten years, especially with indie labels and a lot of musicians going into business as labels, saying, "I get it. You mm -hmm. know, we're not here to screw you. We're here to." grow you mm -hmm. and, and that makes a huge difference or and also a lot of just independently as in this is me i put it all out and and it's all all me and any right. success i get is all to me which is great it is great it's I mean, it's hard it's great you can do that I but mean, you know and then you have on the other hand you have the products that got scooped up and said you've got talent and i can market you right. and they get scooped right. up and they decide eventually at some point you reach a crossroads of just i'm going to yeah, I'm going to ride this and, and I'm going to enjoy this until, you know, I get to a point where I can start making artistic decisions on my own or something. Right, right. You know, so it's like, oh, of all the crap he gets, I got to say, I give a little bit of credit to Justin Bieber. Right. As he got older, he started, you know, doing things that, like, I'm sorry, you, he, at, what was he, he was in his, I think, 20s, early 20s maybe, so go on com the roast. Go on Comedy Central roast and get roasted. Right, right. You know, and and not only that, boy can drum. I hate to say it, he can drum. Well, um, man, what a, he's you can't make like a, you know, dirty prepubescent Justin Bieber jokes anymore because he's like in his, almost thirty now. <laughs> Yeah, well, I was gonna say that's sweet, you know, Justin Bieber ass or something. You know, that's you know, he's easy, Calvin Klein. But he's pretty <laughs> soon he's gonna be middle aged you know, right. before we even know it. All right, well, <laughs> I want to thank you for coming. What a great, what a great closer. Though. Yes, yes, exactly. I want to thank. Thanks for having thank me. Wyatt for coming. Thank you for watching. Before we get to the music, Wyatt mentioned he was a bit of an occultist. He actually brought his tarot deck. Oh, so man. we're actually going to record him doing a tarot reading live or Memorex. Am I, is that, am I doing your tarot reading? Or I don't care, dude. Sure. <laughs> go ahead. But um, so we're going to take a quick jump cut. I'm going to get set up for that. And then we'll get to the Muzak. So yeah. thanks for watching and uh, hang out. And uh, we'll see him here and then up in room six. There you go. Ba -da -ba -ba -da Okay. Well, yeah. We have many, many uh, cool things here. These, uh, these are the uh, elemental tablets. The uh, the practice of Nokian magic right now this is the magic that was delivered to John D, the court astrologer for Queen Elizabeth the First, the uh, occasional spy for Queen Elizabeth the First. He uh, allegedly uh, he 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 caused a uh, a tempest, a storm, to erupt, to uh, to ward off Spanish uh, forces that were invading uh, the kingdom at the time. Um, he also supposedly laid laid the groundwork for uh, for colonialism as we know it by suggesting to Queen Elizabeth that we could uh, perhaps inherit some land in the new continent. Inherit, yeah, yeah, <laughs> because of I guess some kind of weird. Uh, legal paper they had that said that the Knights Templar had visited here like, you know, a long time ago. Uh, it basically gave her, her the idea and went from there and they ended up, you know, colonialism, horrible thing, you know. Oh, but, you know. Yeah, that's a whole other channel. It was a good gonna... <laughs> idea at the time, you know. It was, yeah. it was, it was, it was just on his part. Anyways, he, he communed with angels. Uh, 
through through uh, a medium that he had, uh, Edward Kelly, and uh, that's I commune with the same angels. These watchtowers are the angels' names laid out in a magical language called Enochian, which they channeled, and uh, this is the watchtower of fire in the south. Watchtower of air with a sword in the east, watchtower of earth in the north with the ball or disc, and watchtower of water with the cup or beer <laughs> in the west. And um, yeah, and these are my tarot cards. So cool. Give me a reading, sir. We'll do it. Um, go ahead. Oh, and that's right. I have to flip. shuffle these and uh, take a few minutes and kind of meditate on the. A question you may have okay. for the universe. All you card players out there, I apologize in advance. Smooth as butter. <laughs> um, spend a little time though, to shuffle them around, and get the cards tossed around. It's not like a not like a poker, right? But a little more like. A, I'm 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 starting with just that to. You want the uh, you want the cards to kind of fall into place like okay. the way the universe kind of suddenly came into being. Okay, and I think I'm good with this. And then just uh, cut them. Okay, you want me to keep cutting? Yeah, just throw those on top. Just throw oh, them oh I'm sorry. I'll be alright. Jeez. No problem. Okay. Well, I recognize some of these cards. We're beginning here. This is uh, matters that relate to the present and the question asked by the querent. Um, it would appear that you have recently entered into a kind of partnership with someone, a kind of uh, collaboration. It could be as simple as what we're working on right now, to it could be something, but it is probably something more complex and involving uh, the nature of, you know, your whole life, the, the right. cosmic energies that are pulling you in the direction you want to go. You've recently entered into a partnership. And that's true, but I can't, it's hush hush. I'm okay. talking right now. Okay, but it, yeah, right, good. So you know what I'm talking about. Um, two of wands and the ten of discs here. So basically what we have is, uh, it's what's led you to this point is this kind of, um, this kind of, uh, contemplation. You, you, you've spent a long time carefully thinking about things and, and where you want to take things and, um, well, I mean, it's, it's very, very simple. Uh, basically, this is what you believe to be the happiest route. This card basically encompasses a kind of uh, emotional well-being, a kind of, you know, they're standing underneath a rainbow, everything, you know, there's kids dancing. Um, you've taken some time away to contemplate this, and entering into this partnership is going to lead you in the direction that you know, that, that you're hoping to take things, so to speak. Makes sense? Yeah. It's a very, very, very simple. Um, it makes sense and it's true. Okay, cool. Um, so this is where things get interesting. This is the future. Um, Which is? I'm sorry. Well, oftentimes in this, in this layout... No, I just didn't see where you pointed. Um, we have oh. one potential future versus another. As ah. if to say that one plan of action will carry out one, but a different would carry out another. Okay. And this doesn't look very good over here. Um, awesome. 
we have the eight of swords which is you know it's it's sorrow it's it's uh bondage it's um tough time and basically this is basically the, uh, the this is the potential for a very very bad um outcome is all I can really say about that. I mean, the tower card is very, very destructive. Now, is that germane to this partnership idea? Or is that just in general life? Yeah, I know. It's pertaining to the okay. nature of... Yeah. Um, so I'm going Ooh. to I'm going to say as simply... And I'm getting... I'm just reading the cards. I don't know what this partnership is yet. But one outcome is not going to be good. That's all I can say. Okay. So um, this is a... Potential. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the tower to signify? The tower is um, the tower is a very very interesting card. I actually have a song about the tower on Red Dragon. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's a song called Cerberus and the Tower. Uh, I had a dream basically that um, I, I had reached to pet this dog, uh, and and I, I looked behind me and lightning struck and this this tower that was looming over us collapsed and i remember running with this horrible fear you know that, that i was going to die because there were these these this tumbling brick and everything falling all around me and i realized that i i'd completely been taken to that card it's like it's like the shattering of of your foundation so that just know? even further says possibly bad idea for the partnership well yeah yeah it's it's saying that i mean so all, all, all of these cards are essentially bad i mean basically we have we have the nine of discs which it could mean actually great great success material success but it's inverted yes. which is in, in opposition so we have the potential for financial you know uh, pain yeah we have we have you know sorrow and ruin and then we have the tower, you know, but, but I mean, the, the only uh, positive that, that I could pull from that outcome is that it would, you know, that, that's something that, that could kind of, the, the tower card can, can be a form of putrefication in the sense that it kind of shakes you to your core to where you can rebuild from there, which yeah, sure. I, I think it's important to always think of things, you know, I was just going to say, it seems in those like regards, that might be a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that because if you can think like that, you can pick yourself up from anywhere, you know? Right. I mean, but, you know, it's, if it's a simple matter, then worst case scenario, it doesn't work out and you can start over. Okay. But over here, we'll go over here. Option B. So, Page of Swords. Uh, Page of Swords card often brings to light um, an actual person associated with the matter. Uh, is there a young girl associated with this? Mm, not that I know of. Not that you know of? But, um, but I mean, I have an 11-year-old daughter, so... Okay. Um, well, with the matter at hand, is there a, an older woman? Uh, again, no. Or a female character at all? No. Again, not that I know of, but there may be. Okay. There may be that in the wings that I don't know about yet. That's interesting. Um... As, as far as I know, it's just well. A, you a said guy. your daughter. You yeah. said your daughter, so that's something that jumped out at you. Um, if this is a different outcome, I would almost say that what this would mean is to kind of, uh, with her in mind, take a different route than whatever this is proposed to be, mm -hmm. and uh, contemplate very carefully. You know exactly how you know this is going to pan out because it, it's it's going to be a bit of restructuring from there. Yeah. You know, that this doesn't seem like a solid plan. This seems like something that, that could backfire. Gotcha. Um, and um, it might not be the easiest, but, you know, basically when I look at this seven of discs, you know, it's like he's growing a garden, you know, and discs correspond with the physical world, you know, uh, there's things like money, you know, and health and success. Um, he's, he's carefully cultivating his garden, um, uh, and seven is the number of Venus. Seven is filtered through discs. It's, it's like, um, it's a beautiful garden, you know, beauty comes into play, powers of Venus, and, uh, but it might not be easy. And that's with the three swords in the heart. Yeah. Um. Might come with a bit of pain. Okay. Does that make sense? Still, overall, 
better than option A. Oh, that looks horrible, whatever. You know, I don't I don't know. know. That, those are very negative cards, is all I'll say. And then what's going on with these <clears throat> two down here? Okay, and this is usually... Uh, this is advice on what you can do to get the best outcome, and these are forces that are at play that are beyond our control, like forces of fate and, and divine intervention, things like that. Okay. So we have the Nine of Wands, the World, and the Seven of Swords. So what I would say is that Perhaps there's focus or emphasis on something right now with regards to these matters that is a bit futile. Perhaps there is uh, directed energy uh, at something that um, you're looking in the wrong corner. Like, it, you've put a lot of emphasis and energy on something that is... Uh, a, a bit of a waste of time. Not, not you know, not, it definitely doesn't seem like... It would be obvious. It, it, it seems like a complex matter, but if you would simply let a few things go and and look in a different direction, you might fare better. You know what I mean? There's a bit of this card represents futility. Okay. Um, and again, this is this is somebody who's kind of like uh, he's he's kind of like he's got this 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 garden of wands. But what is that? That's like energy you know you, you can have a garden of, of discs because that's you know that's like material wealth that's like but but a, a garden of wands that that's like just wasted energy wasted right. potential basically you know what i mean okay so the world i kind of look at the world is a really cool card because basically we have the woman here which is us on our path and she's standing between you know the guardians of the threshold you know, and it just like here, you know, we have the, these uh, these cherubs, these angels correspond with the watchtowers, you know, they're, you know, the bull of earth. We have the lion of fire. We have the eagle of water. We have the angel, the human angel of uh, air. air. Mm -hmm. And um, basically, it's just it's it's a very simple matter of of looking in a, in a slightly different place, letting a few things go. There, there's definitely a, an emphasis on a kind of energy that's being wasted in the wrong place. Let a few things go and look in a slightly different direction. Mm -hmm. And I think that you'll fare better. It might not be as easy or it might be hard to let go of, but it'll, it'll be much, much better. Actually, the potential will be all good. And there seems to be emphasis on this young girl. It could be your daughter. That's that's what came to mind. Usually, the first thing that comes to mind is the best. Okay. And then. And, uh, right. and keep in mind, I have no idea. Right. Uh, what we're talking about. I'm just reading the cards. So. Yeah. We'll, it, it was we'll a, it was, it's a potential. Um, oh no! Tell me. I, I want to read them before you before you tell me okay. if you don't mind. But. Okay. Um, so over here we have energies that are at play that are above our control. And um, it's very, very interesting. Um, the ten of Discs inverted. Yeah, the Ten of Discs inverted. Huh. It's almost like... It's almost as though you uh, recently... Like, ab abandoned some kind of guardian or something it's almost as though you've let go of someone who is a bit of a protector and they've you know you know what i mean yeah there's an emphasis on someone kind of turning around so someone who would have protected you before whose their influence is not there right now for whatever reason and that could be preventing uh hmm. this you know what what you're used to with regards to success and things like that does that make sense? If, yeah, I, I don't know if I'd call him a protector per se, but I, 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 I but it yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense, yeah. So, so cool. How did I do? Did that was that cool. <laughs> yeah. Well, for, yeah. Um, it seems like I have two options before me regarding uh, this partnership deal thing, and I need to think heavily about it. And the one involving a young lady might be 
the, the more advantageous, or at least the least painful. Right, right, absolutely. <laughs> or yeah. there's always the option of just not doing it at all. That's true. <clears throat> yeah. Um, well, thank you, man. Um, cool. And it's cool. Yeah. Awesome sauce. If you enjoyed that, please, I'm going to put a link down below where you can check out more of his stuff. Um, in the meantime, stick around. We're going to go up to the guitar wall and hear uh, some uh, good old Wyatt on uh, good old lyre harp. Good old among lyre, other things. mostly guitar. Right, right on. Probably play one so song. stick around and um, yeah, see you up in room six. <laughs>
The egg-headed mass can shift through portals. Fluctuates in height, performs amphibious pantomime. Among these little wisps of green, at the crossroads where we meet, the elder lily darts her glance. Ignites the lycanthropic trance Where time creates nothing but shadow Isolation is the opposite of God Folding backwards into two dimensions Transform into jackal. <laughs> when the cobra tempted Eve, he walked on four legs like a sphinx. So run me and strike me with the poison of grim.
help guide her through the darkness. Take her hand. Return when years are full. Now the sky begins to snow and the mountain. Blue, white, and pure. Feel the loneliness they breathe. Feel so tiny underneath their mammoth peas. Made me everything that I am, but I am full of shit. Drugs and I got married, and we built a little cabin. We made love every night She grew distant in the morning The days I couldn't touch her Felt my body sore and bleeding I hid my love for drugs Under a locked bathroom door I hid our love and love Parks and shady parking lots Scarred arms, weird eyes And bloody streams of snot Raining from my nose Shivering with no clothes Fight your loving mother And fight your loving father With the devil's pretty daughter I could have been a saint Lord, I almost was a martyr The days are spinning so fast Caught up in the past and future Cause drugs and I got married And we built ourselves a temple Chose to live this way, I think about it every day. I try to cheat on drugs, I found myself this pretty girl. Kissed me in the woods, I got turned on and I kissed her back. But then I tried to make her love me, and her love was something that I just, just couldn't have. So I tried to change the world, and then I just let drugs come back. And we hit some real highs, Lord, we hit some real Pushed away everything that I own But now the ceiling fan is spinning And there's still rice upon the stove The fast for three weeks And I'll be sleeping on the streets Cause drugs and I got married And we built ourselves this mountain 
We couldn't calm down, not for the dreams of having little children. Or the hopes of our mothers and fathers, or the food and fancy kitchen. Don't you shed a tear for me, I never worked, I never earned it on its Nearby I heard some snakes hissing, heard some coyotes howling. Now I dreamed one of them would just come to me and finally take away the morning. I dreamed I'd go to heaven, I hope the God's not laughing.
neither black nor white. Out of touch, out of sight, with a thousand peacock eyes, merging and descending at the cornerstones of sight. Oh, I'm a Neither black nor white. I'm the serpent twin, Deuces, Androgen and Gyander, Trismegistus, Mercury, Hyphenus and Wolverine, with my talons in the entrails of lost denizens unfolding spring there's blood in my mouth black toxic sludge pours out I'm a parasitic succubitic ponzi scheming cyber scheming one tone shagall and the Dimensional beastess priestess. Beastess priestess. So, jackals guard the entrance to my vaginal tomb. Summer pours down like thunder. Is a crack crown in the tower's roof. Oh, G O D, and that's just what I aim to be. Yeah. Ooh. Oh, yeah. And from my phallus, tongues of flame. Erupt gargantuan swastikas Teleport with naked flesh To midnight alleyways in Mardi Gras oh, Everyone else suffers But my life is such fun <laughs> Sex bleeds in the death arrows And Thanatos as one Oh, travel through time and fall backwards into space on long, lean, green, high-heeled Atlantean frog legs, just like G O D, and that's just what I need to be.
skies of whirling dust, whirling black, red, and gray. I got Step inside here Ain't no turning back thank Wyatt McKenzie for coming by. It was a great interview and a great performance. Thanks for having me. It was a lot of fun. No worries. Um, if you'd like to support more content like this, please consider clicking my Patreon link down in the description or buy one of my CDs. In the meantime, if you want to check out more videos like this, go ahead and click here. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel, go ahead and click here. And uh, check the description for all sorts of links. He gets guy. drunk. Yeah, he gets <laughs> drunk this guy. And if you know any uh, bands or musicians that you want to see on the show, by all means, hit me up in the comments. Let's get Led Zeppelin. <laughs> I hear they're up, they're up and coming. <laughs> yeah. Uh, remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6. Say bye. Bye.